get to the semantics of this first. Uh, you've been tactically neutral, but structurally bullish, and now you're tactically bullish. A explain this to me, and then let's go further from there. Right. So in simple English, in English, we're we're just bullish. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. we've been structurally bullish for over. <laughs> yeah, we've been structurally bullish for over a year. Every now and then, we get a little bit concerned when we think that the sentiment's gone too far, too fast. Uh, you know, someone's tightening monetary policy, which was the case back in February, where where China was tightening policy, and I was really concerned about the energy sector and the material sector. Uh, and, and that's what we, we didn't really like. Um, and so we took a pause for breath. But I, and as I was telling Yvonne earlier, that I think what's really changed the last three months mm -hmm. is that uh, inflation has dropped. And that makes a huge, huge difference. And as I said earlier, I'm just not convinced with inflation falling around the world why we're even having a discussion about central banks taking the punch bowl. I know people are talking about it, uh, but I'm not so sure why. Now, let's go into the biggest market we have to talk about here, of course, with China, and as well as its uh, uh, monetary and credit cycle indicators there. Explain to us uh, why this uh, is a great place to go. And, you know, off of that, as we were talking about with Chris, uh, China was notably absent in their report in terms of uh, risk uh, factors. Yeah, how things have changed. If you think about earlier this year, or indeed early last year, you know, there's going to be capital flight and RMB devaluation. You know, there's going to be an economic crisis, and none of that really happened or happened at all. Uh, and I, I think that the Chinese have been, policy authorities have been very smart in that they have tried to rein in some of these speculative excesses uh, that emerged, for example, in the insurance sector, in the wealth management product sector, uh, just in the local government sector. Uh, I think it's really good to rein this excess speculation right now, otherwise it would get really huge. I think one thing that people forget about China, you know, we, we, people complain about there's overinvestment, there's overcapacity, there's too much loan growth. Mm -hmm. we, we know all those stories, everybody does. I think that sector is getting smaller and smaller as a percentage of the index and of the economy. So today, China, the, the MSCI index, uh, is about 38% technology. In the U.S., it's only 22 percent. So when we talk about China, we're not talking about metal bashing industries and telecoms. You know, that is very 15 years ago. When you're talking about Chinese equities today, you're really talking about technology, and, and that's really it, and then hmm. some consumer services. So I think these are structural growth stories. Uh, you know, they're penetration stories. They're scale stories. Uh, and, and they keep surprising us positively with their earnings. Uh, so I think there's a, there's a huge move towards oligopoly power, towards market concentration in China, whether it's the SOE sector or the private sector. Uh, and, and we know from talking to our clients in, in the U.S. and in Europe that they tend not to like the Chinese macro story. They, they do like some micro stories, uh, but I think uh, most of our clients are generally underweight in, in China. Yeah, 